Lesson 2, Unit 6, the Performance Framework. To have a better visualization of the information created in the log frame, a results framework is used to have a graphic representation of the strategy to achieve the project objective based in the cost-effect relationship. The graphic also helps stakeholders understand the basic theory of how the project objectives will be achieved. The results framework has many variations, but most of them don't include the activities and only focus on the results, the outputs, outcomes, and impact. Activities and inputs are represented on the activity schedule. The results framework may include one or more outcomes, each necessary to contribute to the long-term impact. Each outcome will include all the necessary outputs required to achieve the outcome objective. This level is important. Each outcome must have all the required outputs. The project will not be able to achieve the outcome objective if one of the outputs is not delivered. For example, to fully achieve outcome three, all three outputs must be delivered. A results framework can include global goals, region or country goals, and the sector or program goals that the project will contribute to achieve. Each level of results will have its own predefined results indicators. These indicators are defined in the strategic framework on all projects in organization align the results framework to these indicators. This ensures that the results obtained at the project level contribute to the results at the organization level. For example, the outcomes of a project framework can be aligned to the intermediate results of the organizational framework. In results-based project management, the logical framework matrix moves up one step further and incorporates some changes that will allow a better structure to manage and monitor the project. The performance measuring framework adds the following elements. A baseline, a target, milestones, frequency of collating the data, and responsibilities for collecting the data. This is the tool that the project will use to manage, monitor, and evaluate its performance. Note that this framework does not include activities. The process to construct indicators. Indicators should be measurable in terms of quality, quantity, and time. This is called QQT targeting and consists of four simple steps. It starts with a basic indicator sentence like reduction in water and sanitation related diseases. Then we add quality reduction by 80%. Then we can add quantity in 100 communities. And finally, we add time by the year 2018. This is a simple process that can be used to guide the development of good indicators. The baseline is the value of the indicator taken before the start of the project. These values act as a reference point against which progress of the project can be measured. The information on baseline can include the date the baseline values were obtained, and this will help determine the performance of the project over time. Targets are the expected value the indicator should reach by a specific date. Some projects can break down the targets by year to report on the progress made. For example, a three-year project may have three targets, one for each year of the project. The last column of the performance measure framework include information on the frequency of the data collected for each indicator and the person or groups responsible for collecting and reporting on the data. The performance measure framework is used during all phases of the project in implementing, monitoring, evaluating, learning, adapting, and even replanning. The use of project management tools helps manage implementation of the project intervention. These management tools are the work breakdown structure or WBS that describes all the project activities. 
the project schedule with the estimates for the completion of each activity, the budget with the cost estimates for each activity, and the responsibilities chart with the identification of the people responsible for doing the project work. These tools use information from the log frame activity level. The main activities identified throughout the log frame analysis are a summary of what the project must do in order to deliver project results. The WBS is a results-oriented hierarchy decomposition of the project work. The WBS is a technique to break the activities into manageable tasks. The breakdown allows for tasks that have sufficient detail to estimate their time and the resources required. Each task can then be assigned to an individual who will be responsible for doing the actual work. The WBS is usually represented in a graphical chart that identifies all the work that is required to deliver an output. The project schedule is represented in a Gantt chart that shows when each activity starts, how long it lasts, and when it will be completed. This is usually represented in the form of a bar chart, which sets out the sequence of activities and links them to critical events or milestones. This chart is a graphical representation of the time required to complete each activity and the time to complete the whole project. The Gantt chart is simple, it's easy to read, and can be used to track progress against time. The chart uses the activities from the work breakdown structure as headings for each row. And time units, years, quarters, months, or weeks, as the headings for each column. The project budget lists the cost of all the necessary inputs required by the project. This may include personnel, basic office premises or facilities, equipment and materials, or services such as subcontracting supplies, training workshops, and other miscellaneous inputs. For each activity, a list of inputs is prepared, and this can be aggregated by category, such as materials, equipment, and personnel. This can help produce the project procurement plan. The total cost of all activities and the administrative and other general costs associated with the project represent the total budget of the project. This plan will help monitor the budget expenditures. The responsibility matrix lists all the people, including partners and other actors who have a responsibility to complete an activity or a task. All tasks and activities identified in the WBS should have an owner. The matrix can be expanded to include people that will provide support to the person or group responsible for the project work. The project implementation plan is a summary of the information generated in the planning phase. Its main use is to monitor and report on the progress made by the project. There are many variations for this plan. Some donors have templates that are required for their use by the projects they fund. Organizations can choose to modify the plan to meet its own needs. In general, the information includes the following elements, the project context and the rationale, the logical framework, beneficiaries, management approach and structure, the roles and responsibilities, the implementing partners, uh, WBS, schedule and budget, uh, the performance measure framework, and any other plan that it may include cross-crossing themes such as gender and environment that the project will address. The critical elements of the project implementation plan can be summarized in a planning matrix, such as the one in this example. The matrix will show the budget assigned for the project, a description of the activities, their duration, the expected outputs with targets and milestones, and the people responsible for each activity. This matrix is a useful tool to manage the project.